cool. This video was sponsored by LastPass. Visit lastpass.com to simplify your life. Take a look at this. Hmm. Mysterious, huh? Puzzling, even? I was trying to build suspense, but the title of the video gives it away, as always. It's a puzzle box. For the past few months now, I've put out a good handful of videos about different puzzles that I've designed and 3D printed to share with you, but in all of those videos, I keep getting comments asking me to make a puzzle box. And puzzle boxes are pretty popular, especially here on YouTube, because it's fun to watch people try to solve them and there's a lot of different variations, but the general idea is that it's some kind of mysterious object and the, the user has to figure out what kind of secret mechanism is going on inside of here or just how to solve it, how to find some kind of hidden compartment or something. I really liked the idea of puzzle boxes, but I kept pushing the idea away because I didn't like the thought of having to print all these different parts and assembling it, basically unsolving the puzzle before it's meant to be solved. To me, that kind of ruined the point. So now I've finally done it, but I gave myself a very specific challenge and that was that this puzzle had to print in place as a single piece that you take off the printer and it's ready to be solved. So this weird thing right here has several different mechanisms going on inside and they were all printed in place as you saw in that time lapse. And I will go ahead and explain this and actually have a go at solving it later in this video but first I want to show you what led to this point. When it comes to making something somewhat complicated, you usually want to do it in baby steps. So before doing a full-fledged puzzle box, I decided to try out some smaller print-in-place puzzles to see what I could get away with. So these are my lockpick puzzles. From the outside, they all look pretty much the same, but I just wanted to play around with the internal mechanisms and see what I could come up with. They're all based on the same kind of idea of solving a maze that you can't quite see, but I took a few different approaches in terms of doing that. Here's the first one I came up with, and the idea is always just to remove this top hinge. So for this particular one, you can see there's some wiggle room in the top, and you kind of have to figure out the, the correct way to wiggle it back and forth in order to remove that part of the lock. The way that it works is it has these little pins on either side that fit into channels on both sides of the lock. So there's actually two separate mazes on each side, and while individually they're quite simple, the idea is that you have to solve both of them at the same time, and that adds some complexity. So sometimes the lock has to be all the way up front, all the way to the back, twisted one way or twisted the other way, and with all these different positions combined, you have a pretty interesting puzzle. The only problem here is that there's quite a gap through the top, so it's pretty easy to just look inside and see the maze itself, and also, a lot of the time it felt like you were just jiggling the lock instead of actually figuring something out. The idea behind my second lock is pretty much the same, although you can see we have this kind of flat key and you have to tilt it at different angles and try to solve it that way. This one also works by having two pegs on either side, and here you can see they're kind of displaced. And once again, inside of the lock there are two different mazes, one on each side, and they have to be solved at the same time. The problem with this one is just that it's really difficult to design two mazes that work together in a way that makes sense for this puzzle. So this one works, but it's a little bit too easy and making it an actual complex puzzle would take quite a bit of effort. With my third lockpick puzzle, things actually got a bit more simple, but with that simplicity, I was able to make a more complex maze. With this one, there's just a single rod that goes down the center of the lock and it's just a matter of twisting it and pulling it up and down and figuring out how to get it out. Once again, there's a pin at the end of the hinge here and that runs through these channels that basically create a cylindrical maze that covers the inside surface of this tube. So here you can see that and it looks pretty complex but it was actually easier for me to model than the other mazes. With this first attempt, the tolerances weren't quite right and this pin was kind of dull so it was easy to just force the entire puzzle apart, 
But the idea was good, so I made five new lockpick puzzles. These are all based on that same idea of having a single cylindrical maze. But I went ahead and fine-tuned things and figured out different little tricks to make difficult mazes. So we have five different mazes here of increasing difficulty. So here you can see there's a kind of a keyhole at the bottom. And when this comes off the print bed, you kind of push that in and that separates the two parts. The model also has a really slight gap here at the handles, so you can kind of just snap it apart. And with a decent printer, it comes apart quite nicely and the parts work together really smoothly. So the idea is once again to turn it and twist it and solve this little internal maze. At this point, I had a good amount of experience making these types of mazes, so I was able to design some that were decently challenging. With these five locks, I'd say it still takes maybe two to 15 minutes to solve, but it's quite a fun challenge. Here you can see how I redesigned the pin to make it a lot more robust and less likely to get worn down over time. Inside of this maze, there's six vertical channels, each 60 degrees apart, so you have kind of these different orientations that you can rotate the pin in. And then of course you also have to move it up and down and weave your way through the maze that's inside here. It's really fun to just wiggle it around and try to learn the maze without actually seeing it. Speaking of locks, another thing that's important to keep on lock is your passwords. I remember back in the early 2000s where I had three accounts. You know, I had my email, I had AOL Instant Messenger, and Neopets. I had one password for three accounts. It was easy, life was good. That's not the case anymore. Now you hear about security breaches in the biggest companies all the time and you have 30 different accounts, so you have to have 30 different passwords for all your different online accounts. It's a mess, it's a hassle, it's one thing that you don't want to be a puzzle. Well, luckily there's a solution in the form of LastPass. LastPass relieves that hassle of having to manage all these different passwords and the anxiety of getting locked out of your accounts. You know, that one password that you have to remember for that one website you only use once a year? LastPass is the web's most trusted password manager. Basically, you've got your LastPass account, and with that, it'll keep track of all your passwords for you. You sign into something once, and it'll remember that password on all of your accounts, on all of your devices. It's a game changer. LastPass is easy, it's secure, it's the best of both worlds, so do yourself a favor, visit lastpass.com, or check out the link in the description, and give it a shot. Alright, let's get back to the fun types of puzzles. You know, the ones that aren't connected to your bank account and your personal emails. As I mentioned, I made these five different puzzles and they're all slightly different and they also employ different kind of tricks, ways to try to slip you up. So I designed a few more of these locks because I really like them. With these first five, there's only room for six vertical channels and there's only so much height for the maze on the inside. So with these new ones, I went ahead and scaled everything up a bit and that allowed me to have 10 different vertical channels and there's also just a lot more height so that you can fit a much more complex maze inside. Here's what the inside looks like, and you can see that I highlighted certain faces in green to keep track of the actual solution. So yeah, naturally, with this larger lock, I was able to make some more complex puzzles. All right, so awesome. I created 10 different lock-picked puzzles. They're all super fun. You should definitely go to My Mini Factory and download them, but I still wouldn't exactly call these a puzzle box because there's only one mechanism that's actually at play, and while they're all slightly different, you know, it's, it's not really a mystery, it's more of just solving the maze. I actually quite do like the fact that you can peek inside through the bottom, because it kind of gives you two levels of difficulty. If you really want to give yourself the true challenge, cover that with a piece of tape or just don't peek, and you really have to learn the inside of this lock. But if you get frustrated, if you need a little bit of help, you can take a little peek in there, and it won't ruin it entirely, but it will definitely help you out. So that's a cool little side effect of making this a print in place piece and having the bottom be open. But, puzzle box. This is the actual end result I wanted. A puzzle box, something that's mysterious and weird and has several things going on that you really have to fiddle around with in order to figure it out. All of these puzzles definitely helped me figure out tolerances in terms of printing in place, I found that a 0.4 millimeter gap between separate parts was about as tight as I wanted to get so that this could be printed on just about any pretty good printer. 
Still, this has a lot of different things going on, so I did have to print four versions of this until I finally got one that hopefully will work. I just took this off the printer. I actually haven't tried it yet. Oh, I hope it works. But I had three versions before that that weren't quite right, and with each one, I, I learned what was wrong and made some changes. Iterative design, it's how all design becomes great and it's why 3D printing is awesome because it allowed me to do this in a couple of days instead of months. Anyways, I think it's time we try to solve this. And I kind of have a dilemma here because if, if you're planning on printing this, you definitely don't want to watch me solve it because that kind of ruins the surprise. Half of the puzzle is figuring out what you're supposed to do. Still, I want to share the neat ideas that I came up with and all the little mechanisms and help you learn from it. So here's the deal. If you're a puzzler, if you're into this kind of stuff, if you have a 3D printer, skip to this time right here. After this point, I'll stop ruining the surprise. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and run through all of this so that anyone who just wants to watch and is curious about how this thing works, you can figure out how it works right now. Let's do it. So let's imagine that someone just handed us this strange object and told us that we have to reveal the smiley face. That's the goal of this puzzle, is to find the hidden smiley face. We can see that there's some loose parts in the bottom here, some kind of interesting looking keyhole, and this, this part right here seems to have a thread on it as if it can be unscrewed, but there's not really any way to unscrew it here from the bottom. If we take a look from the other side, and look inside of this dark and mysterious hole, we can see that there's a kind of notch in there that matches the same pattern as this hole in the bottom. So one might come to the conclusion that we have to get that hole on top of that notch to turn that thread. But first we have to get this part out, and we can see that there's some threads right up here as well, and if we look through this little house-shaped hole, you can see the thread in there. Underneath that thread, there also seems to be some gear teeth and they just happen to correspond to the teeth on this key. So maybe we can go ahead and use that key to turn these gears. Huh. So there's this kind of motion of pushing the gear and then twisting the key so that you can pull it back through. And if you just keep repeating that, slowly the pin starts to move upwards. Looking from the bottom now, we've revealed some kind of a track and there's also some pins that you can see on that inner rod suspiciously similar to my lockpick puzzle here. Hmm. We can see there's this kind of grip on this top knob here and it wiggles a bit, but it doesn't really twist. I tried to keep moving this up, but eventually it just got stuck and that top knob wouldn't even wiggle anymore. So let's go ahead and move backwards a bit and see if that changes things. Ah uh, yes, now at this certain position, I can suddenly do a full rotation with this knob. So maybe if we just rotate this into the right position, we'll actually be able to unscrew this piece. I'm gonna go ahead and carefully test out different orientations until I find just the right one. And now, all of a sudden, I'm able to continue unscrewing. It helps to kind of pull the gear teeth from this side as well. Ah, so there we go. Sure enough, at this very specific orientation, the pin is actually coming a bit further out. And now I can actually just manually twist this thread. Ah, and there we go, the thread is now loose and we have made some real progress. If we just do a bit more twisting, we can go ahead and pull it out even further and now you'll notice that the whole pin can actually slide along this track. This next part is pretty easy, it's just a bit of fiddling around, doing some twists, some slides, and eventually we're able to just slide that key right on out. Nice. Now we can take a look at this key and see how it actually works. So as you can see, there's two independently moving parts. We've got this thread connected to the gear, which allows you to turn it with the key. And then this knob at the top controls the pins at the bottom, which lets you solve the maze that's on the lower portion of this puzzle box. So now we have access to this keyhole, and it just happens to fit perfectly through this strangely shaped hole. So we'll stick that in there, rotate it a bit until it just locks into place, and then we can go ahead and start twisting it. 
and you'll notice this part coming out from the bottom. So we'll just keep twisting that until all of a sudden we have our smiley face. There it is, puzzle solved. As you can see, there's a little recessed compartment in here, which means you can slip in a little note or maybe an embarrassing photo from that Christmas party and you can pass that on to the next person who solves the puzzle. We'll just go ahead and screw it closed again and reverse the entire process. It's a lot easier going backwards. And there we go. We have the mystery box sealed once again. Since I had those older prototypes of this puzzle, I thought it might be interesting to cut one in half to get a nice cross section and better understand what's going on inside. So I took my bandsaw and just did a manual cross section right through the middle. Now we've got this really cool view of the inside of the puzzle. So let's go ahead and put the pin in there and kind of get an understanding of how this works. So here we are in the starting position and you can see how this gear is just barely exposed so that it can be turned with that key through that little hole. At this point, the bottom part of the pin can't rotate at all. It can only move upwards. But once it gets to this certain height where the knob just sticks out, there's a channel that allows this to rotate completely. From there, we have two positions that allow us to continue unscrewing the puzzle. One of those channels is a dead end. It blocks you just before you finish unscrewing things. But in the correct orientation, you can continue to unscrew the thread completely. And then there's just a couple more turns until you get it freed to move down this slot. From there, it's just a few more twists and turns and the key comes right out. Now we can drop it through this hole, fit it on top of that pin and unscrew the bottom compartment. The bandsaw melted these two parts together, but basically it's another sleeve around a screw. And when that screw is twisted, it moves the sleeve down until the smiley face is revealed. All right, there you have it. A make anything puzzle box I did it and it's a doozy it's quite a challenging one and I'm, I'm so happy that I was actually able to print this in place it's it's not the most complex but it's definitely a feat to have this print in one piece so I thought that was super cool you guys should definitely print out this puzzle if it's something you're interested in or give it out as a gift this one itself takes quite a long time it'll probably take you about a day to print because it's got a lot going on on the inside but as I said, I also have these smaller ones available. All of these are free on my mini factory. I'd say the lockpick puzzles one through five are pretty fun, not too challenging puzzles. Good for the casual puzzler. Then there's the lockpick puzzles six through 10. Those are definitely more for the person who wants to spend some time and actually have a real challenge trying to solve it. I'd say these are definitely up there, but the real challenge for the ultimate puzzler, for the person who does nothing but puzzle. It's the make anything mystery box. I don't know if I'd be able to solve this if I hadn't been the one to create it. So I'm definitely interested in uh, seeing if someone can uh, see this for the first time and actually solve it. I'm gonna have to give this to someone. And uh, yeah, if you guys print one out, and give it to a family member or someone you know who really loves puzzles. I'd love to hear what their experience was with this machine, this insane thing. I could definitely see this pissing off a lot of people. It's a tough puzzle. All right, there they are, puzzles. The, the toy for when people want to frustrate themselves, I guess. Cool. Well, those are all the puzzles that I designed this week. So thanks for joining me. Thank you to LastPass for sponsoring this video. And that wraps it up. So until next time, I'm Devin. This is Make Anything. Don't forget to stay inspired.